This is part one in the Craftsman Emerson Gen 4 commercial drill press rebuild series. In this series, we will be rebuilding a Craftsman Emerson commercial drill press, model number 113.24520, that was manufactured in 1983. If you haven't already seen it, I recommend watching my Craftsman Emerson era drill press comparison video. The link will be at the top of the screen. In this video, we're going to be discussing some differences between the various generations and the differences between the commercial drill presses and the standard Emerson drill presses. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff and welcome to my shop. We got a lot to cover, so let's get to it. Emerson manufactured drill presses for Craftsman between 1964 and 1984. In addition to the standard 15 and a half inch drill press line, Emerson in 1971 started to produce a more robust 15 and a half inch drill press that they called the commercial drill press. Although the commercial drill presses looked very similar to the standard drill presses, they differed in many ways. There were also several generations of these commercial drill presses, the Gen 3s and the Gen 4s. And since I've been working on drill presses, I've learned that there's actually some distinctions within those generations. So I've started calling some drill presses Gen 3, Gen 3.5, Gen 4, and Gen 4.5. I have a link in the description of this video to a spreadsheet that has all kinds of information about the Emerson drill press line from 64 to 84. Uh, pulley sizes, belt sizes, measurements, all that kind of stuff. And there's other links in the description that you may find helpful as well. These three drill presses are all Emerson Gen 4 drill presses. This first one is an Emerson Standard 15 and a half inch. This is a commercial model. And this is a commercial model as well. The standard model has two switches, one for the light and one for the motor. This commercial Gen 4.5 has two, and the one on the left only has one switch. So those two commercial models are both Gen 4s, but one's Gen 4.5. The standard model has a solid head, and the commercial models have a split head. So like I said, there's a separate light switch on the other two. And then this Gen 4 just had a power switch that turned on the light and the drill press itself. All of the motor switches have the safety lockout feature on them. And that's one distinction between the Gen 3 and the Gen 4. The safety lockout switch was introduced in 1972 with what I'm calling the Gen 3.5. And here we're looking at the side of the head casting and notice these three set screws that are in here. They're designed to close or expand that gap in the split head, which allows you to adjust the take up in your quill and remove any unwanted play. This is an excerpt from the owner's manual that shows you how to make those adjustments on the set screws to adjust that take up and expand or close the gap on the head casting to minimize your play in the quill. Another feature is an eccentric bushing that the pinion rides in that allows you to adjust the backlash of your quill feed. And this is another excerpt from the owner's manual showing how you make those adjustments to the pinion to eliminate that backlash on the feed. Additionally, the commercial models use a different size spring. It's actually one inch longer, which required a longer pinion and so the pinion protrudes through the hub rather than stopping inside the hub. Hence that black knob on the center of the hub. Notice on a Gen 4 standard model that's not there. And that hub is basically the same kind of hub that's on the previous King Sealy and Emerson Gen 1s. And this is another excerpt from the owner's manual 
and you can see how the eccentric bearing or bushing, the feed return spring, the pinion, the hub, all go together. They all have the same type of scale on them. However, the standard drill press scale is measured out in sixteenths of inches, where the commercial drill presses are measured out in thirty-second inches. Another big change is the table. A Gen 4 table is slightly raised from the base itself with a boss around the column. That's a change from the Gen 3 to the Gen 4. And I'm just showing some of the reinforcement to the table. However, the table that's on the commercial models is a much more robust table. It has T-slot channels running through it and a trough around it. I've got the chuck key inside the trough drain hole right now, but you can see the trough, much more robust, much thicker and heavier table. And the T-slots are very, very handy. Here I've got a cross slide vise mounted using the T-slots to this commercial table. The bases for these drill presses were basically the same, commercial, commercial, standard. And this was a change from the Gen 2 Emersons. So the Gen 3s and the Gen 4s all have this base. Columns are the same size and the same diameter. One of the big changes is the panels on the sides of the Gen 4s versus the Gen 3s. These panels now have recommendations on the speed for the motor, depending on your pulley alignment for certain types of materials and the sizes of holes you're drilling, as well as tap sizes and other information. And the information that's on the commercial models is basically the same, but notice that that Gen 4.5 has a silver background where the Gen 4 just has a black background. So they're very handy panels for referencing. Now the motors and how you tension the belt are the same on all of the Gen 4s. Standard on all of these Gen 4 drill presses was a half horsepower motor. However, for whatever reason, and I haven't been able to figure this out, the Gen 4.5 commercial model has a three-quarter horsepower motor on there. And it looks to be original, so I guess they offered them at some point with a three-quarter horsepower, but I couldn't find one in any catalog. Notice the color of the plastic uh, covers that are on the lock handles. On the commercial models, it's yellow. And on the standard models, it's kind of a red orange. But they all use the same size belt and they all have the same pulleys. And all of the Gen 4s came with two of these column collars much more simplified design um, from the original column collars that were offered back when the King Sealy and early Emersons were out. And both of these commercial models have the accessory table and that table can tilt. So the one in the middle is the one we're going to be rebuilding. It belongs to a friend of mine and it has the accessory tilting table as well as the Pressmate table lift system.
and I'll put a link at the top of the screen for my video on the Pressmate table lift system if you haven't seen that yet. So the model numbers for these Gen 4s were on the back side of the head, behind the motor, or between the motor and the head. And you can see there's a uh, receptacle on the inside of the head for the motor to plug into. And that had all the internal wiring for the light and the on-off switch. And I apologize if you can hear my dog barking in the background. But this lighting and switching uh, configuration was a huge improvement over the Gen 2s. And the Gen 3s uh, have basically the same type of wiring system on the inside. This gives you an idea of how that belt tensioner works. There's a screw in the center that you can loosen that will move the tension rod and then it pivots. So once you've moved the belt to whatever sheave on the pulley you want, then you just position that tensioner there and tighten it down. I really like that design and the motor is just hinged on one side. So that covers most of the differences between the Gen 4 and the Gen 4.5 and the differences between the Gen 4 standard and the Gen 4 commercial drill presses. So in the next video, we will start our teardown of this drill press and get rolling on the rebuild. Maybe a week or two before I have that video out. Like most of you, I've been very busy with the holidays here. And, uh, you know, this isn't my primary job. So I've got to do this when I can. In any case, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate the support. And I will see you next time.